This conference will now be recorded. I'll be logging in in a second. Sorry, I couldn't find the link. I'll be with this in just a moment. I'll be right back. E.L. fudge cookies for dessert. All right, knock it off. First the, first the stuffing, then the E.L. fudge. <laughs> I have water. Are you jealous? <laughs> yep, very. Trade you for a Ricola. <laughs> Ricola. My <Here>. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're the saddest of all of us, Zach. Oh. <laughs> That's <life>. your dinner. <laughs> Water. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Would Hello. someone like to, to make a motion to call the meeting to order? I'll second that. Trustee Galusha. <clears throat> All right, D Dorothea, could we have a roll call vote, please? Absolutely, Trustee Keating. Dan, you're muted. Keating, I, are we being recorded? Yes, we are. Okay. Trustee Stetzer? That's her I. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, I. Trustee Galusha? Mm -hmm. Trustee Galusha, I. Mayor Corby? Corby, I. Motion passes. Okay, the first item on our agenda is conflict of interest disclosures. Does anyone have anything they would like to disclose regarding our agenda this evening? I have nothing to I do not. Or do I? That, sir, does not. Trustee okay, I have Steve. nothing to report. Is Steve on yet? I don't see Steve, so. Given Steve's that here. I, we don't Steve's see, here. Oh, Steve's oh, here. Sorry, I missed you, Steve. Sorry. All right, you're up. Is this better? That's better. <laughs> yes. There's a cow in it. <laughs> yep. Well, y'all, everybody should have my report, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any questions, comments? Yeah. What was the uh, what was the challenge at the tequila Rio? You, you said several issues for the new area. Well, what, what they want to do, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out, um, they, they would like to combine the two spaces. Um, they have permission from Mike Newcomb. They own the one property, and they have permission from Mike Newcomb to, to combine the two spaces so they would meet the requirements of having a restaurant, a full uh, serving kitchen restaurant tied to the, um, to, the tequileria, because it's going to open it. They're, they have an application to open as a Mexican restaurant. I'm still trying to figure out um, if that, you know, if there's any issues with that in regards to fire code, um, 
and they haven't come in with any kind of a plan to me yet to actually physically cut a hole between the two uh, structures. I um, mean, that would satisfy, according to SLA, that would be a legal um, use for them because you wouldn't have to go outside the premises to carry food between one and the other. So they would they would kind of create a pathway between the restaurant that kind of goes through. How would they do it? Because there's there's an entryway for the stairs to go up to like twin advertising in between the two of those. How would they how are they proposing that they connect them? I'm just there's curious. One, one space. Have you have you been in a tequila before? Yes. Yes. The, at the back end of the bar, there's one section of wall there that is a is a joining wall. Okay. So there is a there is a methodology in a place to cut and put a doorway between the two structures. Okay. And that leads to me to a question, then, Steve. Mm -hmm. You said that the part of the reason they would like to do this is so that they could carry food to the tequila ria from the and from the new space right so how what are they doing for food presently they have a convection oven and they're serving some sandwiches and some I basic you know, they see. are serving some food they're meeting the sla requirements for the food but they would love they would like to associate a full restaurant you know i mean a, a bigger uh, more expensive or extensive menu tied with the the tequila Okay, so you you will be on hand for us this evening when, as we navigate through the special use uh, permit. Okay, so that you will be able to answer questions regarding what exactly they are applying for this yes. evening because there's some confusion, I think. Thank yes, you. I don't believe, I think the only thing they're doing tonight, Lily, as far as I know, is a special permit to reopen. Whoops, broke, you broke up a little bit. Yeah, somebody else is cutting in there. But I, I believe the only thing they're applying for tonight is to open up the restaurant again, not the pass through and that, that whole thing. I don't know that okay. that needs to go before the board other than needs to have an architect and a permit um, as long as I can ensure that the fire code is met for the two buildings. I see. Okay. So what we're so talking Steve, about I, is I have, a I have a question. Is the... I think you told me before that the Parker block, the yellow building, was being sold. Has that has that been sold? The which building being sold, Bob? The the big one, the big one on the corner. No, I th I think I was mistaken. I had thought that, but I think well, Newcomb's not going to sell his building. You know what I mean? Right. So I didn't, didn't expect that. No. Yeah. So will they still they is there still an option for them to put in a door even though it crosses a property line? As long as it's permissible between them and the other property owner, yes. I see. Okay. And it would have to be a rated door, I'm assuming, with a like a four hour rating or something. That that's what I'm that that's the thing. I want to see what the architect comes up with before I really okay. peruse it because there's been no application, so for me to spend time to really go through it yet, you know, I mean, I need to see what an architect's... It's uh, all speculation at this point then, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay, great. Yep, Renee? So you, have a, um, you, on your, you said you read and processed over uh, almost 300 emails researching and answering questions regarding zoning and historical preservation requirements. Um, how does this compare to last year? Is this it, it, does this mean we have some work to do on our on our code and our preservation requirements to make it a little clearer, or is this par for the course? I think I think now we're it's it's more email interaction because of the COVID. You know, what I mean, normally it used to have people would walk in or okay. or you know, that type of stuff. I've seen. I mean, I had twenty three emails in one day. Okay. You know what I mean. And these are, you know, it's a variety. Some are questions, some are, you know, applications, some are just, you know, junk. But like you said, 23 in one day. So it's, I, I have a feeling because of the, the pandemic that a lot of people are doing their stuff on a computer. Obviously, they're sitting home and they're, they're transferring information on computers versus walking up to the door to ask a question. Okay, makes sense. 
Um, I just wanted to mention another thing. The owners of Rachel's have expressed an interest in uh, perhaps doing something in front to make permanent uh, the seating arrangement they had this summer. Um, again, it's preliminary at this point. I, I, Steve and I are going to meet with them. I think it's on the 22nd to discuss some potential ideas, um, but it might help eliminate the safety issues and the aesthetic issues with the parking in front of the site. Right now, there's five parking spaces. One is a handicap space. So we're going to look at options that might preserve some of that parking, but also allow them more flexibility with their seating. Yeah, in that, in that same thing, um, Aladdin slash Lock 32, um, the Collinses are coming in with a proposal for a, a covered uh, type structure that matches the other one um, that's closer to the canal. So they could also have an enclosed area for the colder weather. Um, if, if some things aren't thought of outside the box, we could stand to lose a few businesses in this in the village because their their restrictions are 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 stifling them. They're they're putting them right in the ground, and um, so I think you know I'm hoping that both boards, you know, this board and the planning and zoning board can look outside the box a little bit and and do things that'll help some of these people survive because otherwise their their prediction is you will lose fifty to 75% of all indoor restaurants once the weather hits. And I think that's a shame. Steve, as part of that review, um, are there accommodations for um, what do they call curbside? Because some of that is I'd like at Aladdin's, it's not Aladdin's, but because they have some, but at um, Rachel's is a little challenging for their curbside because where, where do their customers pull up like in the winter? Yeah, they don't really do much curbside. They do takeout. You know, I mean, people for lunch and go up like that, but they really are are, are more adapt to you getting the food and eating it, you know, hot right uh -huh. there. They would like to put in a, a structure of some sort, you know, uh, if it works out, that would be closable, you know, with some maybe plastic walls like, like Aladdin's does. And then when the weather's nice, you open it wide up to the open air space. I see. Uh-huh. Um, there's many, many places. If you look, actually, Justin had sent a lot of pictures in regards to he was in some other cities and they've done some very unique things as far as taking parking and making outdoor seating uh, for these people to survive. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and it, it would help the streetscape too. It would look better. Sorry, Dan. We'd no, 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 go ahead. The, the aesthetics of it would, would, um, be much better than a parking lot out front. It, it could be a, a game changer for the aesthetics of the four corners, I think. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the walkability, right now there's kind of it feels like a gap on because of all that parking. This would close that in and really would be a, a really nice aesthetic addition for the village. There's a possibility of not only some seating but landscaping that would turn that asphalt parking lot into something green. green so yeah. again, it's preliminary at this point. It will have to come to the board for a special permit if something goes forward, but we just wanted to give you a heads up. Thanks. Yeah, and okay. um, the the other obvious place to think about more is Shane Place, and and we we didn't get a positive response the first time. I think Renee, you were kind of point on that um, right at the beginning of the spring, but that was at the beginning of COVID. I think, I think we're ready for another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be another place for us to hopefully uh, make things easy for those businesses. And of yeah. course, that'd be challenging with the State Street Bridge closing, but right. something we should think about. But we've about. got lots of spaces that we could think out of the box, like what Steve was saying. There's so much parking right in front of buildings that don't need to, to be there. I have all sorts of ideas, as does, you know, Casey's leading the charge here with a really interesting um, idea, too. So. Um, let's continue to talk and think outside the box, as Steve said. It's a great opportunity. And I think the spirit of this actually fulfills uh, a lot of what the comprehensive plan was trying to achieve. So I think, you know, there's a silver lining to anything. If there's a, any silver lining to COVID, it may be that we're um, revitalizing and energizing some of our public spaces that hopefully will benefit everybody in the long term. So I, I agree with you, Renee. All right, I have another item to address the board. Um, Mr. Jewett 
has come in for his annual Christmas tree um, sales. Um, he is he applied for the temporary permit and then was asked based on the new code to also come in and apply for site plan review. He has paid $100 for the initial um, temporary permit. And then because it's a site plan review, there would be another $100 fee. I would ask that the board waive the second $100 fee as this is something he's never been required to do before. Um, he was he was a little taken aback at the new requirements and, and the things he was made to do. So I, I would like to do something to help him out a little bit. And I would I just like to pause here for a second. I am going to recuse myself from this part of the discussion, obviously, because of my family relationship. Uh, is the landlord to Dave Jewett, so I will not participate in this discussion. Okay, I would then uh, propose that um, we, I will make a motion that the Board of Trustees uh, waive the $100 fee required for site. But it's not us, though, Steve. It would be the Planning and Zoning Board that's looking yeah. at the site plan. I know, but the fee has to be waived by you. The planning board can't, I don't believe, can waive. waive no, they cannot. So, so, correct. So to waive the planning board requirement for a $100 fee, as uh, Mr. Jewett has already paid a $100 fee for his application. Is there a second to that motion? I'll, I'll second that. Trustee Galusha. Any discussion? The only discussion is, is is not around Mr. Jewett, it's around the, the dairy itself. And, and Steve, it looks like there was some progress there um, with them remediating, remediating some of their issues. And that's good because that's been dragging out for years, obviously. If um, Do you feel there's an end in sight to um, the various violations? I, I think I've done actually a, a pretty decent job without having issue, issue any violations at this point. Um, Charlie, both Charlie Fox and Charles Corby have accomplished some of the things I've been asking. It's obviously an ongoing battle um, that you have to keep on the people, but they are starting to comply. The pond looks beautiful behind the dairy. Um, they've taken care of the red house, all the knotweed that was growing into the foundation. So, so far, two of, of four issues are taken care of there. And on the same set, the three items that were big ticket for me, for Charlie Fox, have been taken care of. So it is, you know, I've seen progress without having to be, you know, the real bad guy here. Okay, great. I'd like to call for a vote, please, Dorothea. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. Motion passes. And Steve, just to, just to cap that conversation, I, I appreciate that you're doing it with a lighter touch um, of not having to issue citations and that kind of thing. But in both of those cases, this has been going on forever. If citations are never warranted, it's in this occasion. So we want to move these to completion, mostly because I'm sick of hearing about them. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am pushing, but kind of the way I look at it, nobody, however anybody else dealt with it before, wasn't me. Do you know what I mean? So I, I'd like to do the method that I'm, I'm doing and gaining progress without creating enemies. Um, I, I feel like I'll always be able to work better and get more things done by by creating, you know, cohorts versus enemies. So of course. If, it comes to, if it comes to that, I have no problem issuing a violation if somebody's going to ignore me or not do anything. But as long as I'm seeing progress, I, I'm a happy man. Yeah, uh, and you have our support on your approach, at least myself. Yes. I don't want to speak for everybody else. Uh, yes, if I can say something, Trustee Galusha, Steve has been doing a very good job trying to bring the Corbys to the table to work these problems out. Our goal is to see that Christmas tree sale sale continue this year. We don't want to have any problems, and Steve's been working very hard at that. And I'm confident that we're going to be able to resolve all these problems. 
uh, so the sale can can go on. Okay. All right. Anything else on that before we move on? Okay. Uh, next item we have is the DPW report. Zach, you are up. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, <clears throat> hi. <laughs> Village Grove is complete. The project at Village Grove is complete. Um, just waiting on a couple more invoices to get the final tally of things over there. And uh, hopefully we should have that by the, uh, the meeting next month. Um, street lights that have been missing for a while now have been installed and are up and running. 28 Munner Wav storm sewer has started. Um, there have been a couple setbacks due to weather and an injury, but the work has started and is moving forward. 44 ran place. Uh, uh, Zach, an, an on the job injury or a uh, or a not on our job, on a different job. Okay. okay. It, wasn't, it wasn't someone in the DPW or that works for the village. It was the contractor that's doing the work. Okay. He was on another job and ended up hurting himself and uh, it tied him up for a day. But he's back on the job now. Sorry to hear that. He's already he's tough. Terry Tree has removed the ash tree on the creek bank at 44 Rand Place. Um, the root ball is still in place, but um, hopefully this winter we'll be able to get to it and shear the, uh, the side close to the creek off to try to straighten the creek out and hope to minimize the erosion. Um, I did get an assessment, mitigation uh, assessment for the oak tree at 38 Bout Nav from Bartlett Tree Experts. Um, it was included with my report when Dorothea sent out the last update. Not sure if you guys have had a chance yes. to look at it. Yes, I we haven't have it. studied it, but I'm I'm hoping it's positive, as positive as it, it can be. It is. Um, looking at the tree, it's 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 big, it's old. There's a lot of rot on it, and to kind of prolong its life, I think you know this is a good plan. Um, rather than just going in and taking the tree down, I know there are a lot of residents who feel that the tree, you know, they, they'd like to see the tree stay. So I think this is a method of being able to keep it there for a little bit longer, with reducing any um, any issues that you know the limbs might fall into the adjoining property. So um, this is something to consider. And I, other than taking the tree down, I think this is going to be our only approach. Okay. Bob, I'm not sure if you've had a chance to look at it and your thoughts on it. I have not gotten over there yet, um, but I think Zach's, the one thing I haven't done is while I was away, the owner of the property contacted me. Um, <clears throat> although I'm allowed to come to Village Hall because I'm an essential worker, I'm still within quarantine until next Monday. Then I'm going to meet with Maria, uh, the owner, and just talk to her. Uh, about the options for the trees. So I think we need to consider that. There are safety issues there. And so I, I like to just reserve judgment until I have a, a chance to meet with her um, face to face. Uh, are, you at Village, are you at Village Hall right now? I am at Village Hall right now. Okay, so I, I, I guess I don't understand that distinction that you can go there as an now. Essential worker, as an essential worker, you're allowed to go into your office. Uh, that is permissible. Um, but I'm still under quarantine and um, cannot go and engage in with the public face to face. So I, I don't understand how you're under quarantine and at the office. That's what well, I Well, we're not going to discuss that right now, Dan. I, I've talked at length with the caseworker that's monitoring me, and I can assure you that this was done in accordance with New York State's gui guidelines. All right, let's move on. What else do you have, Zach? So, <clears throat> everything uh, else. Can I interrupt for just a minute? Zach, we're not going to do this assessment with the Bartlett Tree people until Mr. Corby meets with with the owners. Is that correct? Yeah, we're not going to spend this money. Look at it. Just be, I mean, it's it's kind of a historic monument in the village. As far as public seems to be about it, um, so I think 
we we have a couple more weeks before something drastic could happen. Um, but I don't want to wait too long on this just because there is a possibility of something happening. Yeah, we need to move along because not only is the tree important to everybody, it's a landmark, but also because of its size, it's also a potential hazard. So I think Zach has done the right thing. Uh, we're proceeding cautiously and, and evaluating it with a professional. And, um, you know, we're almost there to make a decision, but not quite yet. Yep. And according to our procurement policy, the superintendent and the clerk can make this decision and you've made the decision to to go ahead with this. Is that correct, Zach? Um, Bob, do you wanna take a look at it first? Is that the plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So- and I think Frank's saying we don't, oh, go ahead, Zach. I was just gonna, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, um, I can get a PO and send it out to Bartlett if everybody's in favor of this. I I guess I don't understand how that's not a conflict of interest. What do you which, mean? which part? The Bartlett part of things that Bob's going to review this and it's on his parents' property. No, no, no. no. This is what, what are that? That? <laughs> This is a tree at the corner of Boughton Avenue and South oh. Street. Um, okay. The property is owned by Maria Hewitt, who used to be the chair of the Historic Preservation Board. I think you're confused. Yeah, yeah. My mistake withdrawn. So what we're saying is that we are going to go ahead with this service to work on the tree before Bob Corby meets with the people. We've already decided that we're going to go ahead with that. Is that correct, Zach? Uh, no, what I was saying okay. was I, I think was I think what we're saying, Bob, Frank, is that I'm we're going to revisit this after I have a talk to meet on site with with the 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 proposal that Zach has procured and with the owner of the property who is owns the house next to the tree. Okay. So do you need and and Zach, you don't need. Uh, approval to spend the money you can you and the clerk can go ahead and do that based on our our procurement policy correct this this the cost for this plan uh falls below what would be needed for approval right right so so for now you're all set yep i just wanted okay. to bring it up to everybody's attention that there's a big tree that has a lot of problems with it and it's kind of a monument right okay. <clears throat> Um, so everything else that we've been doing here, I've been keeping you up to date through my weekly uh, uh, reports. Um, there is one more thing, but I think we are going to touch on this in an executive session, and that is for the hiring of a new employee down at the DPW. That is correct. I have one question before we wrap up the DPW section. Um, <clears throat> uh, Carolyn, Caroline Murray, um, who lives on Maple, said she, uh, the stop signs, the or not the stop signs, sorry, the 20 mile per hour signs um, from heading towards Jeff Road, she said they have all been taken down and wanted to know if um, they were gonna be, I told her that some of them got taken down because of visibility and they were being moved to different locations, but she is, uh, she believes there aren't any. Uh, between the library, um, between the library and Jeff Road on on Maple. We did have. I mean, I'm sorry, on South. Jeez. On South. I, I understood what you're saying. Okay. Uh, she lives on was, Maple. <laughs> there was one that we did have to take down because it was. It's a bad placement for where it was because of the stop signs. You don't want a 20 mile an hour stop or a speed limit sign next to a stop sign. Um, there really isn't a good placement for it between uh, State Street and um, Boughton, just given you know the the right of way. There is nowhere good to put a 20 mile an hour speed limit sign. Be, it's either going to be too close to the stop sign, or there's just you know other signs in the way, and it's just a cluttered mess. So okay, I am looking at putting one in between Boughton and. Uh, in East Jefferson on okay. the south side of the road, would it be? Okay. 
side of the road. Um, but yeah, I'm having a hard time finding okay. a place without I, attaching to another pole that's already existing. Gotcha. Okay. Around. All right. So you're aware that that you're still searching. I ha I didn't get to. I got this this afternoon, and so I didn't get a chance to go out there and go walk it myself. To so sorry, I'm being kind of clueless because I didn't walk it yet. <laughs> no, that's fine. I've, okay. I've heard this from a few, of, few, few different residents so far, so it is something that's on my radar. Um, okay, great. Again, placement's kind of difficult. Kind of squirrely. Right now. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. So that's all I've gotten, unless anybody has any other questions. No, but thank you for putting up the polls. They were You're missing welcome. for a while. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I've got a question, Zach. Um, when do you expect to do the additional patching? Oh, we're going to be uh, patching in front of the village office and the office driveway tomorrow. Okay, because I'd like to, it somehow, I've got to figure out a safe way to indicate to you the area on Line Street that I think we should take a look at. Did you look at it? I did go down there. Um, the road surface is not that bad. There's one uh, slight indent down toward Grove Street um, that could be considered a dip in the road, I guess. But really, I mean, the condition of the road, I didn't see anything falling apart on the edge of the road. I didn't get out and walk it, but just drive let's, it down. Let's, let's, it. let's talk about it tomorrow morning, and then uh, we can go from there. Actually, tomorrow morning, I am not going to be here. My daughter's babysitter is not working tomorrow, so I'm home with her. So you're not in tomorrow? Correct. But I can probably reach you at home, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So I'll call I you tomorrow keep, morning. Okay, I keep losing sound. I keep losing sound, I'm yeah, not I sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's... Okay, anything else, Zach, you want to report? Uh, nothing. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, Jeff isn't here. He he will be here uh, before the public hearing begins. So we're going to move to the treasurer's and the village clerk's report. Before we start that, I f wanted to congratulate Dorothea. Uh, Dorothea just received her 15 years of service as a village clerk from the New York Conference of Mayors. So congratulations, Dorothea, and thank you for your seven years of service at the village of Pittsburgh. You're, we're, we're blessed to have you as our clerk. Thank you very much. Okay, on to more exciting things. Let's go on to the abstract this evening. Um, let's see, Mary has some call outs. They're all related to, I believe it's the Village Grove project. As I look through and, it, and, it, and the tree removal at 44 Rand, as well as Scanex pipe for that was the South Street Camry. Is there any questions and concerns in the abstract? This was updated in your last packet, just so you're aware. Were those all within the estimate amounts or my only question? Um, when it comes to Village Grove, I'm going to leave that for Zach to answer. I just wanted to add that I have reviewed the vouchers. Doc, are these all within the estimates? Um, Do you know? Yeah. I don't know about Village Grove yet. I think it's going to be pretty close. Um, my count on tonnage for asphalt was um, about five tons over, which that's pretty close. It's about $75 a ton. It shouldn't be too much. Um, one adjustment that will have to be considered is um, the contract for the milling um, company who they run they run out the, the milling machine an operator and a ground guy um, is no longer done by the half day it's only done by the full day so there will be an adjustment due to that so i'm guessing i'm going to be pretty close to what was estimated eight months ago but i have to wait a couple more i, I don't know how long it's going to take for the invoices to, to come in but just waiting on villager and um the asphalt invoices not sure if that answers hey, your hey. question it does thanks zach 
Any other concerns? Sorry. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to pay the bills? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? I'll Madam Chair, second. second. Dorothea, could we have a roll call vote, please? Sure. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? That's her aye. Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Okay, and continuing on, Mary has a question regarding the outstanding um, attorney bills. Can any of these be paid at this time? Not at this time, don't have approvals yet on all of them. Don't have approvals on any of them. So it's in process. Okay. Um, real quick for the clerk's portion. Uh, there was a question regarding our staffing, so I'm going to provide an update. After review of the applicant's qualifications, they did not meet all our legal requirements. So we have to go back to the drawing board. We have not been able to re-advertise due to the Comptroller Office review. It's tied us up quite a bit. We are planning to meeting of the office staff committee next week to decide what steps we're going to take next. So that's where we stand right now. Okay, and Dorothy, I'm not addressing this to you. I'm addressing this to the other trustees. Guys, we're coming up on a year of Mary's resignation. And so we've been paying more money than we need to. And uh, it, this not being filled is is um, not good. Uh, and it shouldn't be that hard to find. Uh, I'm happy to help if you want. So, uh, yeah, it's about time we finish this one. I, yeah, I just don't I, like I think I just don't I want like to correct that money than we need. I to. think I, I'd like to correct that. We're actually saving money because Mary continues to fulfill her treasurer responsibilities part time. We haven't hired additional administrative office staff in the office. Overall, we're, we're actually saving money. I would also like to note that part of the delay this year, as we all know, is from the COVID situation and the lockdown that occurred and essentially everything was shut down for about three months. Uh, it was impossible to hire during that period. We did canvass over a hundred resumes, which we looked through, came up with three uh, candidates. We did two rounds of interviews, three uh, candidates rose to the second round, um, but a detailed review of their certification and the legal requirements that New York State requires, none of them uh, either made failed to make the residency requirement in Monroe County or had other liabilities that made them disqualified. Um, we've been short staffed in September with vacations and also clerk school for Dorothea, as well as the work with the comptroller's office that has happened. Um, we have a plan for our group. I was on vacation, obviously, for a week for the summer subcommittee working on the staffing plan is going to regroup next week after I'm out of quarantine uh, to review where we go from here. We'll, we'll have an update at the next village board meeting. Okay, a couple points to that. Um, we, you can do meetings over the phone um, whether you're in quarantine or not. The second part is that um, if anything there's a larger applicant pool because of COVID and uh, vast unemployment that that has caused. And last, uh, what bothers me the most about this is that we're paying roughly the same amount of money for half the amount of work, half the amount of hours, which means, and Mary's getting her job done. This is no slight on Mary, but there are other things that we need this money to be able to fund. So we're paying roughly the same amount of money and getting half the, half the amount of work, which is not good common sense. It's not good business. And this is a really solvable problem. So I hope that we have some focus to get it done. Well, your facts are completely incorrect. Um, and anyone that's tried to hire during the COVID period knows that for all intensive purposes, it was impossible to find anybody. And we, we, impossible. we often, thanks for not interrupting. The, um, <clears throat> The ad for the position was put out as soon as it was feasible to get a broad pool of applicants. The other thing I would say, and you know, 
one of the interesting things, as specific as the ad was that we put out, uh, the qualifications of the applicants were not overall impressive, and there aren't. The truth of the matter is there aren't a lot of people out there uh, for the for the pay grade of the position that have the qualifications. And this is a critical position because of the financial issues that are involved. So I, I guess I disagree with your comments. I think you're factually incorrect. Okay, coming up on a year. Let's move on. If any, unless anybody else has any other comments. Coming up on a year to hire somebody. So I think we can do better. Okay. Does anyone else, would anyone else like to comment on the position of treasurer? Is it being advertised? We have it actively advertised right now, still posted. No, no we do not. We need to re advertise, but we're, again, the committee needs to meet and decide what steps we're going to take and how we're going to do it. If we didn't get the okay. right applicants, maybe the, um, maybe the wording on the, on the uh if we didn't get the right pool of applicants maybe the wording on the advertisement isn't um as tight as it could be we're going to review all those aspects to see what's the best way to proceed <coughs> I, I think actually the staff worked on it together uh, i think with 15 years of experience in the clerk's position as well as over 20 position, uh, 20 years experience of Mary Morowski, I think they did a pretty good job specifying what the requirements are. They also referred to NICOM. So <clears throat> again, I guess I wanna speak up for the staff in that um, instance. Uh, it is almost 7.15, so we're almost ready for the public hearing. Would you like to look at one set of minutes that we could approve before the public hearing starts? Because we've got a couple minutes. Let's look at June 16th, 2020. Does anybody have any uh, corrections or changes that they would like to make? No, the notes looked great. I didn't have any corrections to any of them. They looked really good. But anyone else? Would someone June like 16th, to make a motion? Right? To a, We're just yeah, looking at June, June 16th. 16th. Okay. That is correct. I move that we approve the Board of Trustee minutes for June 16th, 2020. I'll second that. Dorothea, would you call uh, do a roll call vote? Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Thank Motion you, everyone. Passes. Okay, maybe one more set of minutes. June, July 14th, 2020. I have a question on page seven of July 14th under State Street Bridge closing. Uh, it says that Trustee Stetzer related that at a recent meeting with the Department of Transportation, it was indicated that they would let the village know which traffic issue area they would be looking at to help resolve. Um, I don't, <laughs> I, were we talk? I, that's not very descriptive or helpful, and I'm trying to figure out what the conversation was about. Maybe it was the pedestrian projects that were going on around it. Does anyone remember? I, I think that's yeah, what it was. I, it, it was about it was about the um, the striping and the pedestrian improvements that we had requested from the Department of Transportation. Okay, and so it, it, this, this should be broken into two sentences. The second sentence said that the DOT indicated they would let the village know uh, of, of a subsequent meeting where these uh, would be discussed in more detail. Okay, so one is about the bridge and one is about the pedestrian improvements? That's correct, yes, okay. because we discussed both issues at the meeting. 
Okay. That sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. I'll make I'll make that change. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thanks, Dorothea. Any other corrections on July 14th? I will I'll make, make a motion. motion. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Renee. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of the Board of Trustees for July 14th, 2020. That's our second. Okay. Dorothea, could we have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Keating? Keating abstain. Trustee Stutzer? That's her aye. Trustee Lamphier? Lamphier, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Um, do, you do you want to check that? Do you want to check that? Bob, I know, don't know that you were there, that one. We check it. Go up to the top. Um, Bob did. He, he arrived he part way. way. He arrived oh. part way. Okay, it's thank you. Thank you, Dorothea. It's, I think it's noted in the minutes, if I remember correctly. It is. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a public hearing for 5 South Main Street. Is anyone here that representing 5 South Main Street? Let me unmute caller one to see if that's our applicant. Okay. I, I, I am here for 5 South Main Street. Tim Paranello. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Pretty good. And you? Good, good. I do love a Mexican restaurant, Jim. I'm sorry. Hold on. My phone is... Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You got me? I think the board is unanimous in its excitement that it is not a Mediterranean restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, even, even, even though we're not, allowed to officially, we're not allowed to officially comment on the... Right. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so uh, I've really never done this before. What uh, what do you need from me? Tell, tell us about your restaurants. Uh, I think what would be helpful is to just give us a general description of what you're doing, what your hours of operation are, how you're gonna handle trash, how many seats, what you expect the, the restaurant will be like. Okay. Um, we are going to be, uh, hopefully in the best of times, uh, a 20 seat, uh, a 26 seat restaurant. Um, and that would be probably outside of COVID, uh, Inside of it, we would probably be more like a 20 seat restaurant. Um, we're trying to look around and trying to find ways to put a couple of more seats in. As you can imagine, um, this is a very interesting time to, to start a restaurant with the upcoming um, winter, which will uh, severely hamper us, even though it would only be six or seven possibly eight seats, it would still uh, be very difficult, but um, we see it as a, a, a 26 seat restaurant, uh, one cook, uh, two waitresses, so three total employees, uh, plus myself. Um, I would I would manage it uh, on most nights and my daughter would manage it on others. Um, our garbage situation will not change from the previous tenant which is a shared um, spot with the tequileria next door. Um, there are two uh, garbage cans out there, and I believe we may need a third. I'm not positive about that, but I, I would assume that, you know, depending upon amount of business that we do, we would maybe need one more uh, tote or whatever they're called. Um, Hours of operation, 5 to 11, uh, Monday through Saturday. And then Sunday morning, uh, we are toying with the idea, and I, I, think it's a, I think it's what we want to do is a breakfast 
Um, so a, a, a Sunday morning, 8 a.m. until noon, um, Mexican breakfast slash brunch. Um, again, that's not set in stone, uh, but the hours of operation here are, are pretty much going to be 5 until 11. Um, and I could foresee it being a little bit earlier on some of the nights, um, depending again on, on, on how we do. Uh, the parking situation will be street and municipal, not unlike the previous tenant. Um, I, I, I don't see that our, uh, our operation will intensify the traffic or anything in the, in the village. I just don't see that, not with 26 seats or 20 to begin with. Um, it's just, we just don't have a big enough operation to intensify any of the, anything around here um, the uh, the restaurant hopefully will complement the, the tequileria and um, you know we're, we're hoping that it will be something that people will like and that's you know I don't know if there's anything else you need from me but that's kind of our, our business plan in, in a nutshell it's going to be Mexican it's going to be um, a combination between authentic and a little bit of uh, the Tex-Mex as well. Uh, Tim, could you just tell us what you do with the trash now? The trash um, from, we have we really have no trash from the restaurant, obviously, because we're not in operation, but currently we have two totes behind the tequila Ria, um, and they're just picked up every Friday, and, and you know, one of them is full, the other one is not. Uh, um, we we do on, on sometimes when we have a lot of cardboard get a little overflow. So you you have a trash tote and a recyclable tote. Yes. And will you need a grease dump dumpster for this operation? No, no, we will not. Okay. Okay, great. And <clears throat> do you expect to have more totes because of more needing more capacity? And do you have a place to store them? I believe that we would need. One more tote, um, and yes, we have a place to store it, which would be right behind the tequila ria. Uh, in the past, the when it was the kitchen and the lounge, they shared the totes behind the uh, what was then the lounge, and we would continue doing the same thing. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions and comments from the board. Uh, oh. I have a quick question about the hours. Um, we might yeah. we need to correct them on the application that we have in our packet. Okay. I think Tim just said five to eleven on our Monday through Saturday. So the proposed hours of operation in the packet that we received, which I'm assuming came from directly from the application, says four to ten. So we we'll just want to make sure that we get that correct in there. Yeah, I'm. I've n I've never run a restaurant before. <laughs> this, is, this is my first go round. Um, I don't uh, open open. I don't. I mean, I don't know that people will eat dinner before five o'clock. But um, and and you can you can always after. ask for more, Tim. And we're not going to penalize okay. you if you actually open at five. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to make sure we reflected it correctly. Okay. It has you closing at ten, so let's make sure that we don't accidentally. Uh, leave it in there as 10 if if you okay. want 11. <laughs> Perfect. That's all I was saying. I, I have no opinion about the hours. Just want to make sure it's reflected as you would like them. <laughs> okay. Ask for the yeah. maximum. 5 to 11 and, would be perfect. and you can always do less than that. There's not a problem with that. Okay. Okay. I all right. Uh, Lily, you had your hand up. I did. And unfortunately, Steve has left. Because my question really involves Steve. And uh, the question is, Previously, I don't think that there was a full kitchen uh, when it was the kitchen. I think he was preparing mostly off-site uh, and then bringing it and finishing uh, at, at that site. So uh, I want, want to make clear with Steve uh, regarding venting and so forth that might not have existed previously. So we want to make sure that that, that is occurring with the new kitchen. But that's Steve's. Um. Literally, yeah, from from what I know, they prepared everything uh, uh, on site. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah they 
they Lily, did. are you maybe mixing up the lounge and and the kitchen? Because the lounge was was doing some. Remember that whole thing in the basement there? Yes. They, they, they had, had a full. I I ate at the kitchen many times. They had a full kitchen back there. Okay, because his original concept when it was proposed was that he was actually preparing most, doing most of the prep off site and then bringing it uh, to the kitchen and just finish doing some finished things. So he didn't require, there was a lot of, you know, fire code issues and, and venting that didn't, that did not apply to the, to the kitchen's operation. This is going to be a little bit different. So I'm sure Steve is going to be reviewing that and that the kitchen meets all the criteria. And, Lily, Steve, you might want to repeat that because Steve just walked back in. Steve, my question was regarding uh, any changes to the existing uh, cooking area, the kitchen, uh, in the, is it called, I'm sorry, the Blue Horn, is it still the same name? I'm confused about the name of the restaurant. The, Mex the new Mexican restaurant is called what? The, the Mexican restaurant will be called Casa. Thank It'll you. Be Casa, de, Casa de Blue it would be its full okay. name. I see. Okay, so Steve, my question was regarding uh, any venting or so forth that might not have been present when the kitchen was in operation, that that, that is being addressed in the new space. Well, I will, I, I will, I will definitely have to do an inspection, but I got to believe that if there, I mean, it was a functioning full service restaurant before that everything in there has got to be up to snuff for. That'd be for great. Super. Yeah. And okay. Obviously, before they're allowed to open, I will be doing a full inspection and fire inspection of the property. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments before we open the public hearing? Okay, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Do I have a second? Let's your second. Dorothea, would you call for a vote? Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer. That's a right. Trustee Lanfear. Lanfear, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion passes. Does anyone from the public wish to speak on this application? Okay, uh, I guess. Yes, not. yes, yes. Oh, hello. Okay. Um, Could we hi. have your name and address, Lisa? Thank you. Yeah, it's Elisa Plummer, 66 South Main Street. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, will the restaurant be serving alcohol under the liquor license for Blue? The restaurant would, uh, unless they were combined, they would not be able to serve alcohol under uh, Blue Horn. No, I understand that, but I mean, assuming that they are combined, it's just a logistical question here because liquor licenses are, I mean, I'm trying to understand is, I thought they were specific to an address. Um, with How would that be handled? I'm just curious. Uh, liquor licenses are not specific to an address. They are, okay. uh, if, if they're one continuous, uh, it would be one continuous flow, uh, which is not presently uh, available between the two buildings. Okay, so there wouldn't even need to be, like say the buildings were combined, there wouldn't need to be any amendment then to the liquor license? There would be an amendment. It would be, uh, okay. I believe it's called an addition um, or something like that, that okay. you would have to apply. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. Yeah. It would be it would be a modification of the liquor license through SLA. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I'm glad it's a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Lily. Yes, thank you. I, I would like to uh, elaborate a little bit on Elisa's question, and that is that we did receive some time back notification uh, to the village that uh, for a an, an additional liquor license. Isn't that correct, Steve? That we did receive notification. So th these are two separate operations currently. And that is the way we have to look at this application. As a standalone on its own, we cannot conjecture about what might happen in the future. So what we're looking at right now 
is a Mexican restaurant at number five South Main Street. Does that, does this special use permit include a liquor license? Do, do, no. Will they? No. No, I it does not. Kind of, okay. So there will be no liquor license uh, uh, attached at this time to five South Main Street uh, Mexican restaurant. Right. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted that to be very clear. So per currently there's one at Blue Horn Tequileria, but uh, currently not uh, at the restaurant. Right. Perfect. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make that clear. And we, and we uh, the, the restaurant would not be able to have a liquor license because it only has one bathroom. I noticed you, that. I noticed that you just had the one bathroom and that was going to be another question. Uh, so in the future, it looks as if you would not meet the criteria unless you'd make a change to the interior of the restaurant. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? All right. If there are none, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Trustee Galusha. Dorothea, would you call a vote? Trustee Keating? Keating, I and I turned off my camera because I'm eating my dinner and you people don't need to see that. So I'll turn it back on once I'm done with my dinner. Thank you for sparing us, Dan. You're welcome. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> okay. Um, I can make a motion if someone else does not wish to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application uh, for, what's the name of the restaurant, Tim? Do we know yet? Casa de Blue. Casa de Blue. I'll make yeah, a motion I'll, to I'll... approve the application for a Mexican restaurant called Casa de Blue at 5 South Main Street in accordance with conditions A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And these summarized are access to the site and size of the site are adequate for the proposed use. The proposed use will not adversely affect the orally pattern of development in the area. The nature, duration, and intensity of the operation which are involved or conducted in connection with the proposed use will be in harmony with nearby uses and will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood nor be detrimental to the residents thereof. The proposed use will not create a hazard to health, safety, or the general welfare. The proposed use will not be de detrimental to the flow of traffic in the vicinity. The proposed use will not place an undue burden on public improvement facilities, services, or utilities. The proposed site is located more than 100 feet from any residentially zoned property and is situated so that it may be demonstrated that existing or proposed features of the site will mitigate any potential adverse effect on the residential property. The proposed use will not create noise, late night activity, or extended hours of operation odors, noise, from mechanical equipment or other conditions that may be detrimental to either the quality of life of nearby residents and businesses or to the general welfare of nearby residential neighborhoods. That's my motion. Would someone like to second it? Lance, your second. Uh, uh, Turner here, do you, did you specify hours of operation? I think, I think uh, that we were four to 11, Tim, is that the hours that you're requesting? Yes, please. And Sunday, is there going to be Sunday hours? There will be Sunday hours. Uh, would be eight until noon. Th okay. That should be included in the permit. I'll amend my motion accordingly. Do I have a second? Second, Lanfear. Okay, roll Dorothea. call, Trustee, Ke Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer. That's all right. Trustee Lanfear. Lanfear, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion We're looking passes. forward to good Mexican foods. Thank you, Tim. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you all in here. Just a quick note, while we had a meeting, someone texted me 
Uh, Zach, Zach, can you hear me? Yes. There's a, the light. There's a light out on Shane Place on the canal. I think it's the first light when you come in from Main Street. Someone just sent me a picture of it and, and let us know. It's either on. It's 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 the one in front of the um, uh, uh, where the bike shop is. Okay. It may be, I couldn't see. It's either on Chain Place or on the canal. I think it may be on Chain Place itself, but there's a light that's out in that area. All right, I'll find it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on, the next item we have is a response to the planning board on LWRP considerations for the active transportation plan. Thank you, um, um, Renee, for your work in consolidating all these comments into a readable cohesive format. And colorful, you forgot colorful. <laughs> and colorful, <laughs> yes. So do, are you, uh, do, do we just need to pass the resolution? Uh, unless you wanna resolution? make any comments, I think we could just pass the resolution. So our next step, we just in case anyone's tuning in, um, the who doesn't know the latest update, we took all of the comments from the planning board, from both their LWRP uh, considerations, um, the beginning of their LWRP review, and then there was a separate document that that was more general about the active transportation plan in general, and it was all fantastic feedback, and the board this board um, on September 16th went through all of those items and uh, we took notes and provided responses on each and every one of those items that the planning board provided for us. So both of those documents, the LWRP considerations and the, the more general um, considerations that they sent in a memo to us, um, both have been notated with our the village board responses in blue font. So if you're following along in your agenda at home, that's what you see there. And then from there, we considered which things uh, should be added to an updated supplement to um, go with the active transportation plan. And now we're going to be referring all of that, hopefully in a minute, if we're all in agreement, to send all of that to the planning board. And then the mayor and I will attend their October 19th meeting um, to go over any questions they might have. Did I miss anything? No, I think that was a great summary. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> any questions? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution acknowledging review of the Village Planning Board Active Transportation Plan and supplement chapter 121 consistency review considerations. That's our second. second. Dorothea, could we have, uh, would you call a vote? Sure, Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion passes. Okay. The next item is we need to set a public hearing for the active transportation plan. Uh, the town has approved the date of December 2nd, I believe. Um, do you remember the time? Was it seven o'clock, uh, Renee? Do Dorothea, help me out here. You know, I don't do believe it's time. Was you know, hold on one second. <laughs> I don't remember a time. If the board can excuse me for one second, let me just check one yep. thing. Sure, and we thank don't you. yet know whether it will be virtual or in person, right? The town is doing meetings in person, but we are doing them uh, virtually. Um, so have we discussed how, I mean, my preference would be given that it's December and this is probably gonna be a meeting where we have a lot of people interested. Um, it would be my preference to do it online to reach the the, the most people possible and um, also keep everyone safe. So I don't know if the location, whether it would be online or in person, was discussed. We hadn't discussed the location, but I think we should approve both options. 
I agree with uh, given the forecast that I've heard about what we anticipate with COVID and the need to accommodate a lot of people, I think it does make sense to have a, a virtual meeting. So, Dorothea, I thought the board already approved sending this to public hearing uh, as arranged between you and the town. They did initially, and then we kind of had a date, and then that went to the wayside. So I put this back on just so I can confirm. I did speak offline with the trustees, and they seemed okay with December 2nd. So I just wanted to publicly put this out that this is the date and have them approve it. Um, to be honest, I don't have the time. I think saying seven o'clock would be okay. I believe the town was looking to use the space at the library to hold the public hearing. So that might be one thing we're not completely in agreement on. Somebody's at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm pretty sure most town town uh, public hearings are at seven. I think that's a safe assumption. Um, we could write it both ways. The board approve it both ways. Um, let's 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 do that. That that let's do it both ways so we're covered. That way we don't have to repeat this. Because that's I'll how we write motion. our current ones. I'll make a motion to approve a public hearing. On December seventh at either second. Six, December second. Second. December second at six thirty or seven PM. Um as either a virtual meeting or a uh, a live meeting with social distance at a location yet to be disclosed. <laughs> Sounds very mysterious. <laughs> I don't know how else to phrase it. Well, it will be, I can clarify that, Bob. It would be at the library, um, the one room downstairs. The Fisher, Fisher meeting? Yeah. The Fisher meeting room. The Fisher, meeting. The Fisher room. Okay. That's where they're holding their meetings right now, I believe. Yeah, um, they're doing that. Correct. So we never yeah. sent out a previous notice about this, right, Dorothea? No. Okay, to no. answer Jeff's question, we did think it was going to be earlier and then. The town it didn't work out, out for the town things there was some misunderstandings and it didn't get posted properly with the town so luckily enough i hadn't sent out the notice officially but okay. to get the monroe county notice started and everything else i need an actual meeting date and time so now we can get all the paperwork done okay one other question wait are we in the middle of a vote before i answer my question well uh if you can ask it if it's regarding the public hearing for the yes, LVR, it is. or the ATV. Um, okay. It is. The, so in order for Dorothea to post this, um, we do need the updated supplement. Um, and so I need to repackage that right now. The uh, additions that we made to the supplement are in red, just so the planning board and uh, the town also knew what came out of that review. Um, and we're not going to want to publish it with red font in there, so I just need to change that. And um, Jeff, when she when Dorothea posts this, she needs the uh, we need a, a finalized version, right? Uh -oh. We do, but okay. Dorothea, Dorothea doesn't need to post it right away, do you, Dorothea? No, I still have a little time because I don't need to post it until like 30 days prior. So being December okay. second, that gives us a little leeway in time. So we could wait until after the planning board meeting on October 19th in case there are any any things yeah. that slight changes. We don't anticipate we, we anything like that. We can do that. And I want to remind everybody that uh, we can still make changes after the public hearing. If, if comments or information is presented at the public hearing that warrants that, uh, we still have the ability to make more changes. So the draft that's published doesn't necessarily have to be the exact final formatted draft. Uh, there still is an opportunity to make corrections and other changes. Okay, great. Okay, with so, that, Dorothea, would you? So, oh, I'm sorry. So how we've done our, hold, can I talk for a second? How we've done our public okay. hearings is we set the live one in person at seven. And if we're gonna use the audio one or the virtual one, 
We do that at 7.30. So people who show up at the live place will read a notice that it's going to be at 7.30 virtually. So I don't know if, if the board wants to handle it that way for this motion, but that would seem to fit if the town does their in-person meetings at seven o'clock. I'm okay that with that. Did that make yep, sense? That, that, that makes too. sense to yep. give people who came in person uh, a chance to read the notice and get back home. Right. That's what I was okay. thinking. Yep. Makes makes sense. Okay, I'm in my motion with <laughs> with Jeff's suggestion. Okay, Dorothea, would you call a vote, please? Um, I'm sorry, real quick. I don't think we hit a second, or if we did, I missed it. Stats are second. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Tr Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha. Frank, you're muted. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion passes. Hey, uh, a quick bit of acknowledgement to how much work um, Renee has done on this. So thank you, Renee. My pleasure. I love this thing. Renee lives, drinks, breathes, traffic calming. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Renee. Okay. Well. Next item, we have an update on our meetings. Renee and I had a virtual meeting with DOT last week. Um, we went over, they sent us preliminary drawings on the proposed improvements. Uh, I don't know what else, what do we wanna report on that? We're still pushing for crosswalks at State Street in the east, at the east end of Shane Place and a mid-block crossing here at Village Hall, uh, uh, connecting Village Hall with the Port of Pittsburgh Park. Those are two improvements that were in the pedestrian safety plan that initially uh, they approved the mid-block crossing, but that's not in the, pr the proposed improvements that they plan to make. They did some minor revisions to the crosswalk at State Street that we, we felt were appropriate. They're extending the sidewalk on the south side of State Street with a crosswalk uh, just outside of the village line. Um, and they've also made some adjustments to the mid-block crosswalk that occurs on uh, North Main Street near the Pittsford Pub and the Dairy. Did I forget anything, Renee? Um, the, did you mention the rapid flashing beacon um, that's going to go to at Shane Place and? Uh, I did and not. North, Thank you. North Main. So and most North, of. North. Yeah, they're going to be doing the one at the library, um, the one at Church Street, and uh, the rapid flashing beacon. Uh, addition at Shane and um, North Main Street. And um, th so those were in our pedestrian improvement plan originally. And now um, those are included um, with the work that NISDOT is going to be doing. And this is part of, uh, so they're, most of what they're doing is realigning some crosswalks and providing better striping and better visibility, putting in ADA ramps. Um, and <clears throat> And then there are a few that Bob mentioned where there's going to be enhancements. Um, I think there's only one rapid bump flashing outs. beacon. What's that? Bump outs. Yes. Bump outs yes, yes. Church Street and the library. Uh, they're consolidating two crosswalks on South Main Street um, to one crosswalk. After we met, um, I talked to Sally Schrecker. Uh, she's agreed to the proposed new location, which would right now one of the crosswalks goes into the apron of Stonegate Lane, which really isn't legal. It's not heavily used, according to Sally Schrecker, the property manager for St. Louis Church. Um, so they're relocating that one to one that will align with the main entrance to the church that's close to, to South Main Street. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, normally, we don't like to see a crosswalk go away. I think we're still going to try to push for these crosswalks at uh, State Street and Shane Place, as well as the mid-block crosswalk right in front of Village Hall. Um, uh, per our um, resident uh, meeting at our, our a village board meeting in September, I have drafted a letter uh, which includes a request to DOT 
Number one, advising as we discussed at that meeting that the speeding situation in the village is a real hazard and making requests. Renee and I met with Bill Smith this morning uh, to get his agreement that we pursue uh, transition speeding zones on East Jefferson Road. And <clears throat> here's, here's the letter. <laughs> um, uh, I've sent a draft of the letter to Renee to review and, and to um, Bill Smith to get their feedback on. Uh, Bill has agreed to, to help us. I think the more clout we have to try to pressure DOT to get uh, the rec recommendations, all of which are included in the active transportation plan. Yes, One thing Lily. That, uh, Am I recognized? Uh, Lily had her hand. Yeah, Thank Lily, you. you had your hand up. Also, um, you did indicate I want to make certain I heard this correctly, that the DOT would be um, extending the sidewalk. They would be doing it, not the village, on State that Street, is Durham Y. Yes. And at that, yes. at that location, is that would uh, the proposed crosswalk would be at, at the end of that sidewalk? There would that? be a proposed crosswalk at the end of the sidewalk, very close to the village line. We okay. also want to have a crosswalk, have them restore the crosswalk that they took away that used to exist at the intersection of Shane Place and State Street by the bridge. The reason I ask is that I did have a conversation with the Pittsburgh Garden Club and alerted them. I wanted to put it on their radar that it would be an opportunity for uh, a gateway um, Treatment. situation there with, with the mm -hmm. where the sidewalk ends and uh, <laughs> where the crosswalk is. So I'm Great. hopefully Thank they will be uh, considering it. For a project. Great. That's a good idea. That's, uh, that's Lil, awesome. Oh, Thank go you. Ahead, Zach. Zach, has Zach had his hand up. Go ahead. Go ahead, Zach. I was just curious. I didn't didn't hear if it came up, but um the crosswalk at on Monroe at Sutherland, is that gonna be uh changed about at all? Because it's it's similar that, to where the crosswalk dies into the driveway yep. across the street. They're realigning that one. And um, I'm very concerned about that one. I have been since we moved here that just what, where you wait is pretty much level with the traffic, uh, with the yeah. traffic lane there. And they said when they're, they're gonna come out and do their safety screening, they're gonna be looking at that location. Um, it's just, um, we, we talked about maybe moving the crosswalk down um, a little further out of that so you wouldn't have to cross three lanes. So that one's tricky and we're not where we need to be yet because it's a, it's very, they can't put a bump out there because of the traffic lane and, but they are gonna realign it so that you're not waiting. So you're up on the curb as a pedestrian instead of in the traffic lane. Um, I'm assuming you mean on the north side. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. It's just terrible all around and I, it just, I'm not happy with that one and we're gonna, keep doing some work on that one because it's just a horrible place. And my kid, I know it well because my kids cross there to go to high school every, um, well, right now it's not as many days as normal, but um, still, so they wait there. Um, I, I, I just don't know if I answered one your more question. Thing. One more thing is that uh, Josh at DOT sent us minutes from the last meeting and said shortly they would be contacting us about scheduling the next meeting, but that has not yet been scheduled. Hey, um, I want to go back to something that Lily said, because the topic I was going to raise was exactly what Lily raised um, about the end. And then Lily, I love the idea of the garden group getting involved there, because that was one of the things on the list. Um, at that spot at State, right at the end there, that was definitely a place that the residents from State Street raised a huge amount of concern about safety there. So I, I do want to honor their input because they said look we think somebody's going to get hit there if you put a crosswalk at the end because it's they're just funneling in at such a high speed and i think that's a legitimate thing that we should address so i, I don't want us uh, there's nothing to solve right here right now i just don't want to see us go gung-ho toward that without consideration for what the residents said because they said it and and secondly i think they're right well we talked about that extensively with the dot and i think the answer to that is all of these things work together in concert. And certainly if, if it's a hazard at that crosswalk, it's gonna be even a, a more of a hazard at the new crosswalk we're putting in here. The overall goal 
example is remember to slow speeding down. And if, if you say, well, we can't put a crosswalk here because the speeds are, it's a self uh, defeating proposition. And so I think, you know, and I sort of summarized this in my letter, when this is finalized, I'll circulate it to the board, um, that we need to use every tool available together. There's a crosswalk in the same proximity to the bridge on the other side of the bridge. We know there's visibility uh, issues with the bridge. That's only an issue because the current speeds are too high. If we achieve our goal with a 25 mile per hour speed limit and the other traffic calming improvements that we hope will be accomplished, it shouldn't be an issue. The more crosswalks there are, the safer the streets become. Uh, when you have fewer crosswalks in a more of a suburban design standard, then it actually drivers are encouraged to go faster. So, you know, it, if you look at South Main Street where there's four of, of those yield signs right in a row, it does have a tangible effect on, on the speeding. And so we have to it, hopefully um, match that, that technique on, on the other streets where speeding is more of a problem. We know that's why Renee and I met this morning with Supervisor Bill, or Bill Smith to talk about enactment of transition, speeding transition zones in the town. So when you approach the village from the east on either Route 31 or East Jefferson Road, somewhere around the highlands or between the highlands and wood creek drive there'll be a 35 mile per hour sign and the same thing would happen somewhere east of mitchell road on on east jefferson road in the town and we also i mean it's a it's a good con it's i mean i i understand what the the residents there are i, I understand their concerns um we have to take baby steps and put all these things together to try to try to change the culture. And one of the things that we get to put in the middle of the road that we can't do right now um, is one of those pedestrian crossing big, big signs um, that we put in other crossings. And right now, and that, that provides a, a traffic calming um, measure itself because visually people see not only the crosswalk, but that big thing that they could accidentally crash into. So I do, I, they have a legitimate concern. I think, you know, we heard the same concern with the crosswalk at North Main Street, that the speeds are too safe there. Part of the reason for doing all of these things is to slow the speeds down. And if we don't start somewhere, we'll never, never get to that goal. Right. Ideally, okay. if we could put a, a median there, I mean, that, as John Limbeck, one of the neighbors there always brings up, like that would be great. And we're not there yet. They're they're not convinced yet. But this is how we get there. These each one of these little baby steps. And, and I think what we've learned over time is pushing on all of these things. Slowly, they happen. You know, we've done a lot over the last 10 years. And I think we'll continue to do if we just keep pushing. They keep telling us no, but we keep asking the same thing and eventually we seem to get, get what we need. Okay, anything else on that? Yes, one more little thing. Yes, I saw our hands. Yes, go ahead, yes, Lily. Uh, I, you probably have addressed this at some point, but was there ever a discussion regarding having a sign mounted uh, on the bridge, in the center of the bridge, two-sided, flashing, yellow flashing, that says crosswalk ahead? because the crosswalk is immediately this way and immediately potentially this way. So if there's a, in the middle of the bridge up above, crosswalk ahead. So they're warned that as they crest this bridge, they're gonna see a crosswalk. Has that ever been discussed? I, we've never discussed that and we can certainly ask that. I can almost predict what their answer is gonna be. I, I, I think I, they're probably- They don't like putting things on their bridges, I know that. Well, it's not it's not that. What they're going to say is it's too high and people won't expect it there. Personally, I think it might be somewhat like the flashing lights at the railroad. So um, I think we can make a note of that and, and bring that up at our next meeting. I'm, I'm open to every idea. There's no no harm in asking. We'll be asking for the fountain again. You're talking about North Main Street Bridge, right, Lily? I'm talking about the State no, Street. No, I think she's talking about oh, State, State Street. Street. Okay. Yeah. You mean because once the has that big hump. Okay. <laughs> big hump like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and flash, flashing lights do tend to slow people down sometimes. 
sometimes they actually work, especially if they were vehicle operated. So when the vehicle approached, they started flashing that that in the off peak hours that might actually have an effect. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, can we move on to the comments uh, from the uh, Village Board Speed Forum? And did you get your question? And yes, okay, it was about the crosswalk. That's right. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so the, the reason I put this on the agenda is just to make sure that these are being assigned and executed on, that, that's all. And some of them we've already had information on them uh, so far in this meeting. Yep, and, and example, we do have a meeting. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, Dan. But you know, no, no, no. It's I was done. I mean, there. Do, how do you want to do this? There are there are 22 of them, and they're in. Yeah, and we've probably talked about six of them already. Do you want to go item by item? Do you guys want to review this? Um, uh, review this on your own and say I'll take this one or I'll take that one, that sort of thing. Or we should somebody prioritize it? How do we want to do these? Well, I've been following through on the things that had my name on them, and I think Renee has too. Uh, I think we should all go individually on them, and if, if um, okay, let's see. Yeah. So, um, work with town on establishing transition zones. You already gave that update. That um, so I'm just going to take some notes on uh, 10 10 13 meeting. Bill Bill Smith is on board with this. And you guys are raising this to uh, DOT. Yep. Uh, Lauren, question about changes to the crosswalks. That's already complete. We gave him those answers. And, and in fact, Renee can probably write up um, what the changes are to all the crosswalks. It'd be a good walk by Pittsburgh post. Sorry to give you more work. I'll write it if you want, and then you can post it. <laughs> um, right. Are you talking about all the ones we've talked about today or are you just the ones from the pedestrian? I think his question was specifically about those that were in the pedestrian safety plan. Yep. 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 Give that one um, to me. Go ahead. <laughs> Carl Carl Jones uh, was the guy with the speed trailers who was yep. the local resident. We're meeting with him on the, what is it, Bob? The 23rd? I think it's the 22nd, I think. 22nd? Either the 22nd or the 23rd, yeah. Okay, good. Um, Gabe and Emily execute on repaving south, redesign of south, especially as the bridge construction reroutes the traffic. That's obviously think, not in this year's budget. Yeah, I think Frank answered that question at the meeting pretty well. Um, the best we can uh, comment on for now is we will try to make it a priority in the next budget, right? Yep, it is a priority. Yeah, but we can't promise anything. We can just right. say we're going to prioritize it. Um, speed cameras and the research there. That's number five. That was a big we're working thing. working on that. Do we want to have them come in and give us a pitch? Yes, we do. I, I'm. We, we are going to do that. We're setting that up. I haven't set a date yet, but I am going to have somebody come in and I'll make a presentation to the board. Okay. Um, okay, so this is 10, 10, this is 10, 13, sorry. We're cruising here, guys, we're at number six. Um, Art had said the space, the parking space right near Pontillo's, and we said that would be removed in uh, bridge reconstruction. Art had it asked- It's not part of the bridge reconstruction, that's part of the pedestrian safety crap. What is that called, pedestrian safety plan? Yes. What is the New York State, yeah, the pedestrian yeah, safety plan. Just yeah. Tried. But it is planned to remove it. Well, they're putting a bump there out. A, yeah, go ahead. They're putting a bump out and they're removing a space. So the visibility issue that occurs now will be uh, alleviated. When does that get done? Uh, well, some of these, the preliminary things, I think they told us they're going to do them sooner than we expected for the uh, the curb ramps that are going in. So I think that's actually next year, isn't it, Renee? I, I think believe that's they what he said told us. they said it's not tied to the bridge project. So that could happen 
Um, but they're going to do the bump year. outs before the restriping and yes, the paving. That's correct. Okay. The, the, the whole schedule has not been completely finalized. And they told us last time in our next meeting, they'll have firmer dates for when all of this is going to be scheduled. Um, Art had asked us to publish information. It was a pretty, pretty vague ask, but I think, you know, we've published the action items list. I'll do it again. Um, any other and ideas? On the the mayor's it? working on a newsletter um, and we're going to have some of the things, the speeding and traffic calming issues in there. Renee is writing a wonderful article on traffic calming. Okay. Um, Matt Lenard. I am. I thought it was short and sweet. <laughs> okay. And wonderful. It, it feels like a lot is falling on Renee. Is, is there any way to involve some of the other trustees in this? I think we've all been working on this. Uh, okay. Keep going. We're good. That one's an easy one. That's already in in process. Um, Matt, Matt Lenars and Christy McMorrow and some others said, hey, uh, increased enforcement is what we're really looking for. So another call to Captain Delizer. It is. I mean, he's yes. <laughs> I, I just sent in another request this morning after I got Caroline uh, McMurray's uh, ask about people running through the all way stop. So they'll give that special attention. Um, but it, okay. this is part of a bigger conversation probably with the town about um, the fact that we don't have enforcement. We don't have a designated um, officer to do this. So I don't know if it's, it's yes, one piece of this is talking to the sheriff's department for enforcement, but another part of it is, a, is part of a bigger discussion. <laughs> yeah. I, I would just uh, comment that the, the correct action item would be to continue talking to the sheriff's department. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, Brooke had an idea to have the DOT come walk it on foot. Yeah, they're about to do that as part of this big lit. They're going to walk through, and I'm encouraging them to do it during rush hour and not coming at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, this big list that they just gave us of proposed changes, they're going to come out and do a walk, a walk audit to make sure they've aligned these correctly. So part of that is in, in process. Okay. Tim, Tim Galley said, uh, underlined the speed sentry on Jefferson was seeming to improve things. We took it away and then went to the smaller one and then almost immediately after had an accident, but it seems that wasn't related. But um, you try telling the neighbors that they feel very strongly about that. That 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 the large one was effective and the small one isn't. Good to know. I I think and statistically the data shows that speed sentries are most effective when they're moved around. Okay, so I'll I'll note that um, the current stance is to move it around because. Okay, uh, Limbex, the sidewalks aren't acceptable for service vehicles. Um, wants a median that's a, on- that's, that's a code enforcement officer enforcement yeah. issue. It's, they're, they're not, it's motor vehicles are prohibited from the sidewalk. So yeah. somebody was, was right. Okay, Jason Small, yeah, same, same thing on more visibility of the police raised crosswalks on state that's not we already, yeah we can't do that right now because of the volume of traffic we love that idea but right now okay swagler possible. reynolds uh same thing please make permanent the speed century around jefferson and eastview terrace hawthorne on on reitz parkway this was one that um Bikes on the sidewalks were an issue. Stencil on the sidewalks about no bikes. Bob committed to the end of the month to complete those stencils. That's something they're for... they're done. They're done. They're... Zach got yeah. Zach's team got those out. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. Okay. Um, okay. 
uh, formal letters. Bob's doing that now. More sessions like this. Dave Armini, Director of Health and Safety at RIT. Um, it, you know, he kind of said all the things that we've known are effective and are working on. Uh, but he is somebody we should probably engage because he's mm -hmm. um, so helpful. Okay. Um, Gabe Diaz, bring the DOT to meet with residents. Um, and yes, uh, there, another public. public I, I want to comment on that. I just want to comment on that, Dan. Um, DOT has been because we have we've received that request before. We have passed it along to DOT. They yeah. have a very specific uh, protocol for meeting with the public. They only do it on their terms. They don't generally want the public at their meeting unless they have a designated public information session. I believe they're going to have another one before these projects actually begin. We'll find more information out that at the next meeting. But I, I just want people to understand it's not our just it's not our call. We can request it, but we've been told before that they have a certain protocol that they follow, and we don't have much uh, leeway with that. I just want to make people's uh, expectations realistic to what we can actually do. And we anticipate that to underscore what you just said about the public input sessions, we anticipate that they will have another meeting before the State Street Bridge reconstruction. Is that correct? Or do we think they're done with those? I think they're going to have one more meeting on the schedule of the work that's going to occur. I believe there is one more public information meeting they're going to have. I, I, okay, then they'll probably memory. roll in some of these pedestrian uh, improvements as well um, that haven't been finished so. yet. Okay, and, yeah. and, and that's, that's the best deal. time to, whoops, go ahead. It will also deal with the schedule for all of this work. Okay, and that's really the best time um, to get them out because they're already there and they often bring a, bring a very large team and they're looking for input and they give you yellow stickies and have you mark up maps and that's really when we need the public to, Everybody to go, right. yeah, so we could probably do a better job. Of, yeah, I was going to say, we sorry. can probably do a better job uh, as, a, as a village government to get the word out, to encourage people to go. Um, that's all. Yep. So that could be at on our action item. The other thing is hopefully we can do it at a time when the COVID thing is hopefully less severe so it can be done safely. Okay. Um, four more quick ones. Um, Brooke wanted us to make sure every time we talk to DOT, we deliver that information on speeding and survival when there's a pedestrian that's yep. hit over and over. And I know that's something you do, Renee. Yeah. And I hope I, Bob, I'm imagining is ha has that in that letter too. If not, mm -hmm. we can weave it in there. <laughs> the other thing I haven't put in the letter, but I wanted to include was the data presentation that Dan put together for the meeting in September, because I think that was very compelling. Yeah. Um, David Levine uh, suggests speed humps, trees, bump outs, particularly near Rand. I assume he means on Jeff Road near Rand. Is yeah, he's got to be in that cross. To, that yeah, cross probably, probably. That's pretty we know narrow. That crosswalk, that's one of the worst speeding areas in the village is East Jefferson Road where the accident occurred yeah. uh, uh, last week. So what's our okay. answer to him? It, that doesn't seem like it's part of any immediate plan. I, I think I think we've been focused on State Street, but I think there's a whole a whole nother frontier with East Jefferson Road of things that have to happen there. I think maybe the first step is we do a walk of that stretch to actually experience it ourselves uh, and then then try to come up with some some ideas. But I don't want to say something right now because I don't think we've studied it enough. And I think we've got to look at it and, and we've got to do something because it is it is terribly dangerous to cross at your street, Dan. And um, and we know that that's narrow. Um, Zach uh, said that when we first put in those pedestrian or when DOT put those pedestrian signs in as part of the pedestrian safety, the big yellow yield signs, um, there was a, correct me if I'm wrong, Zach, but a bus 
the school buses kept hitting it because it's such a narrow turn there um, at particularly at Rand where that crosswalk is, right? Didn't we have to move it? Yes, the buses have a hard time turning off of Rand onto the westbound lane of East Jefferson. So the uh, the yield sign that sits out in the middle of the road <clears throat> was asked to be moved. Um, we have kept it in there and it's been hit a couple times, but uh, it's it's a 50-50 between the residents that want it there and the bus garage that wants it. <laughs> right. I don't know who to please in that situation. Yeah, so we've got a, we've got some work to do there to figure out what yeah, the right. Yeah, I, I think we should. I I'd be cautious about removing it because I I mean for the bus the bus drivers who drive too fast through the streets anyway, it's an issue of convenience. Uh, yep. For the residents, it's really a, a health safety issue. So if I had to defer, I'm gonna defer to the residents over the bus garage. I agree, it's still sitting there. Yep, good. Okay, so last one, uh, last I think two. if we- uh, Hold on, hold on, uh, there's two more. Donna Fleming from French Road, um, she had sent something to us, but it's the town. Did we forward that on to them? She had sent an email in. Did anyone forward it to the town? I don't think I have a copy of that email. I don't was, have a copy of that email. Was this the issue of um, families riding on sidewalks? Was she the one that wrote in no. about that? No, no, she wanted a sidewalk on French Road because there's nowhere to walk. Oh, on right. On the east east leg of French Road, right. which we agree, but it's in the town, so we don't have jurisdiction. So that was one of the letters that Dorothea read in. So Dorothy, if you could find that, to, and then I we will, just send it on to the town. I will pass it on to the town supervisor's assistant. Perfect. Thank you, Thank you Dorothea. And then um, okay, the last. last one was uh, the 20 mile an hour signs on south, which we already addressed. So Zach's looking at that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thanks, guys. Between Bounton and East Jefferson, trying to find, you think you have a potential location. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Okay, um, next item, I have just made a draft proclamation for Onondaga Day. There's been a movement to uh, recognize on Columbus Day indigenous people. Uh, this was uh, sent out to you this afternoon. I can read it briefly if, if you haven't had a chance to read it. Did everyone have a chance to read it? Yes. No. No. Okay, I'll read it. The village of Pittsburgh recognizes that long before European Americans settled Northfield, which became Pittsburgh, the indigenous Onondaga people known as the Seneca, also known as the Seneca Nation of the Haudenosaunee Confederation occupied and were stewards of the land on which we live today. The Onondaga, meaning people of the Great Hill, were known as keepers of the Western Gate by other members of the Haudenosaunee uh, guarding the Western areas of the Confederation from outsiders. Whereas the community we now call Pittsford was traversed by the Onondaga Trail leading from Ganondagon in Canandaigua to Irondequoit Bay. And whereas a branch trail led west from the main trail to the Big Spring, which was a well-known source of drinking water and later became the location of the settlement known as Pittsford Village. And whereas we recognize the importance of the Onondaga to our history and honor their role they played in contributions they made in this region, including the introduction of representative governance and environmental stewardship, along with the other members of the Haudenosaunee Confederation. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Pittsburgh Mayor Robert Corby, and on behalf of the Village Board of Trustees, do hereby declare the second Monday of October is Onondaga Day in the Village of Pittsburgh and encourage all residents to honor the history of our first residents and to learn about their heritage and culture and how it shaped the region we call home today. Any comments? Fantastic. Thank you, Bob. That's good. Okay. Uh, uh, Dorothea, could we call for a vote? You're on mute. Oh, do we have a second? <laughs> call set, Stets or second. <laughs> Thank you. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. 
Mayor Corby. Motion passes. Corby, aye. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we now will enter executive session uh, to discuss a personnel issue. Uh, do, do we, we need want to, to finish? Do we minutes. want to finish minutes first yeah, before we do say. that? I'm sorry, did I forget something? Minutes. minutes. What did I forget? Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Hey Bob, uh, you want me to hang around for the minutes? No, I think I think we're good, Jeff. I think we are good. All right. Everybody have a good night. Right. Thanks, Thank Jeff. You. Jeff. Bye, right, Jeff. Jeff. I think we left off on August 19th. We just finished July yep. 14th. All right, I put them on the, the ground. Let me just find where we left off. August 9th, here we go. Okay. Does anyone have any corrections on August 19th? If there are no corrections, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 19th, 2020. Second. Do I have a second? Dorothea, would you call a vote? Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? That's all right. Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. Um, Frank, you're going to abstain from this one. You weren't at the meeting. That's right. I abstain. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Motion passes. Next, we have the minutes of September 8th. The, I have a question on it's is it really called a London plane tree? Yes. That's the name of the is. tree. All right. Yep. It's it's a variety in the sycamore family. Very similar All right, to the sycamore. Then. Many people can't tell them apart. Only geeks like me. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from September 8th. Do I have a second? Lanthier, second. Dorothea, please call a vote. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee, Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Motion passes. October 2nd, 2020. And I will abstain from this because I was away. I will make a motion that we accept the minutes from October 2nd, 2020. I, I have a slight change on it. On the okay. on the CCA bids paragraph, okay. you yep. see where it says in pat, third line, in past discussions, the board discussed using, change it to just a 12 month rolling average because right now it looks like 112 month. Yeah, that must have been a typo in corrections. Uh, and that yeah, is. just using a 12 month rolling average. Yep. Would, 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 yep. Uh, Thank you. And I've got a change on page two, but carrying over the last sentence, it says uh, that if the bid is good and in the best interest of the village, yes, the trustees yeah. would accept the bid. Good catch, yeah. Frank. Yeah, instead of the, the best interest of the trustees. <laughs> yeah. Good catch. Good catch. Good catch. Yeah. Nice, Frank. Thank you. I'll make a motion to accept, oh, or I'll second Lily's motion with the adjustments. Dorothea, would you call a vote, please? Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? That's her aye. Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. Bob and Frank have to abstain, so motion passes. Okay, then we have October 6th, 2020, very short. I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? That's our second. Dorothea, call a vote, please. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. 
Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion passes, and this was my favorite set to write. Are we all caught up with minutes? We're close. We are, we are close. Oh. There's a couple sets still out. Um, all right. Got edited. That was too late to hit you with. All right, I got too excited. There. Okay. We're getting there. I can tell Steve's really excited about these minutes being approved. <laughs> Pure literature. <laughs> Pure literature. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to enter executive session. Yes, Linda, uh, Lily, oh, you I'm had sorry. another item? Just one member item. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just a very Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I should have asked everybody else. I apologize. Okay. Go ahead, Lily. Um, that is the Mary wanted uh, me to bring to you, uh, the trustees' attention that recently, in the past month, we've had two um, requests for benches. And um, the previous cost to the village was uh, around a thousand that included the plaque and so the first bench was um, purchased uh, by the, uh, the individuals for that amount uh, it, then when the bench came in it came to our attention that it was slightly higher so therefore we I would like to request that the trustees approve a new bench price uh, for donated benches that include the plaque the installation and uh, some maintenance going forward at $1,500. And we have had a second um, request for a bench and we have uh, received a check for $1,500. So I would like to, you know, uh, up the uh, price for the benches, donated benches, so I'm requesting that of the trustees to approve that um, increase, the price increase. I second your motion. Dorothea, could, would you call a vote, please? Dorothea, you're muted. Trustee Keating? Uh, I, I'll abstain. Something came up with the dogs. I couldn't, I couldn't hear all that. So no, no need to respond. Trustee Stetzer? Uh, Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lamphier? Lamphier, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Motion passes. Thank you, trustees. Any other member items before we go into executive session? If not, I'll make a motion to enter executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Trustee Galusha. All in favor. Trustee Keating? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Motion right. passes. I'm yeah, I'm signing off. I don't need to be part of this, correct? Correct. No, no, you don't. Thank you, Steve. Have a good Have evening. A good night. Go eat okay, some cookies. I'm, I'm going to turn off the record and lock the room. This conference will now be recorded. Okay. I may make a motion to leave and enter regular session. Do I have a second? Stats are second. Dorothea, would you call a vote, please? Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lamphier? Lamphier, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Motion passes. So now that we're into regular session, Dorothea, I will uh, then I will go through this all over again. Is that correct? Um, you can explain it, or you can just ask for a just, motion to approve sure. the memorandum of understanding first. Um, well, I, I should first say that we are looking for board uh, approval to hire to to fill a vacancy in our DPW. Uh, to hire Jason Cernus at a rate of $18 an hour. One, two, we're looking to increase the hourly rate for Joan Rule and Brad Van Bortel, DPW employees. 
for Joan from 1794 to 1994, and Brad Van Bortel from 1922 to 2122 per hour. And thirdly, we're looking for an approval of the memorandum of understanding between the village and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 118. That's the motion. Got it. Second, I second the motion. Dorothea, Let's, would you call a vote, please? Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Trustee Lanthier? Lanthier, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Motion passes. I have, thank I thank you, one, everyone. Thanks, thanks, Frank. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Um, one, uh, I just want an additional item uh, that I forgot during member items, and it's: Do we need to do anything to prep for the CCA meeting, which is two weeks from tonight, um, where we're going to talk to the residents? <laughs> and I think we we were going to maybe ask that somebody from the CCA be there. Um, we were going to maybe get the word out about the, the 12 versus 24 month thing. What do we need to do? I I think we'll publicize the meeting. I have been in touch with Susan Hughes. I believe she's coming that night to present. Um, I will be talking to her again later this week. I think that the only thing really on our to-do list is to publicize uh, the meeting and, and get the word out there. I'll put something on my Facebook page. I think we should put it on both the village website and the village Facebook page. Once it's written, I'll be happy to put it up. I'll I'll send you something, Dorothea. Okay. All right. I, I have one item too. I forgot to mention before. Over the weekend, several residents uh, contacted me. Uh, actually, I think it was on Friday um, that there were students running in the village that weren't uh, maintaining social distance and didn't have masks on. I talked to Mike Pirro from the school district. They were not from the Pittsburgh Central School District. They were from Nazareth. I've been in touch with Nazareth and have um, just made them aware of, of what people have observed. Generally, um, runners and athletes are allowed to take their masks off, but they are supposed to maintain social distance when they're running in a group. Okay, any other items? If not, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Real, real quick, I, I just, sorry. Um, <laughs> Am I, Jason's asking um, for me to let him know, am, am I good to let him know that he has the job? Yes, the memorandum was approved. We can okay. hire him. One I'm more just, thing. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. I would just say, um, Frank, you talked to Dave Weiler. He's okay with the agreement? Yes, I did speak with the union representative and He's okay with the uh, agreement, and he's in, he's he has agreed to sign the the memorandum with the mayor. Okay, and, I'll just and we, we've also we've also vetted the memorandum with Christian Cassini, our labor attorney. Okay, yes, we with did. that I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Move to your what? second. It, uh, I think Zach had one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yes, I think Zach has one more thing. <laughs> oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Zach. Go, go ahead. One more thing, and I'm I done. I'll leave you guys. Um, third time this year that a uh, yield sign in the middle of the road on North Main Street at Shane Place has disappeared. Don't know if uh, you guys would be able to put some sort of public notice out to keep an eye out for people, uh, either throwing them in the canal. I'm not sure if it's going to turn up uh, next week when we join the canal or what but um i just want to let you know and if you have the means to be able to um let the yeah. public and maybe we can locate them like we did the ones on maple street so okay, a little GPS I'll, chip I'll put in something them. on my facebook page we'll see okay. what we get thank you thank you zach thank you guys very much okay, one more so thing we have... uh, one more thing uh mr mayor can we ask you to execute that memorandum of understanding this evening so that we can get that off to the union tomorrow that's, that's why i came into village you. hall tonight yep great we'll do okay we'll do good okay all right we have a motion on the floor did we get a second i think we did yep, yep.
Okay. Yep. Thank Trustee you, Lily. Keating. Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Stetzer. That's her aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Thank you, everyone. Motion Have passes. a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Take care.